I first started playing football in fifth grade. It was peewee football. Uh, up to that point, I'd just been a soccer player. And actually, my mom, of all people, wanted to sign me up for football. Uh, she thought I was tough enough or ready for it. So I picked up football in fifth grade, and I've been playing ever since. As Michael moved through the ranks of Little League football, it didn't take long for him to realize that he may have a future in the sport at a position low on glamour and high on pressure. At first, uh, I had a little bit of resistance towards being a kicker. I didn't know what it was all about and didn't have much of a passion for it. Uh, at the time, I was in high school and I figured I was going to play uh, college soccer possibly, or at least that was my true passion. Growing up, I just uh, started working on it and you know, noticed I had a talent there. So my dad really helped me to get out and practice uh, almost every other day when he would get back from work, he'd say, let's go kick. And, you know, as we, you know, worked on it together, uh, I started to realize, you know, I did have potential there and, you know, some results in high school football, I had some big kicks, um, you know, and it started to really become my passion. And then, you know, later on, uh, you know, I would be calling my dad and wondering when he'd get off work because I wanted to get better and I wanted to train. And, you know, he always helped me uh, with film study and, you know, it just was kind of a cool, uh, thing to turn 180 degrees from you know being dragged out to the field to then being the one who's eager to train. As Michael continued to hone his kicking craft, he was also making his presence felt as a two-way starter. Michael Geiger, a little bit of everything in the football game. A fake punt, an onside kick, a fake two-point conversion. Ottawa Hills pulls away late. They win 34-8 over Heaton. In Division 7 football, uh, in Ohio, it's a pretty level playing field as far as uh, the athletes are concerned. I was actually, believe it or not, one of the bigger kids on the field. Uh, but I had a chance to play uh, free safety and uh, cornerback throughout my four years. Although Michael was making an impact on the field, it was his leg that was doing the most damage and eventually led to a scholarship offer from Michigan State. I think recruiting for a kicker, uh, it's always a little bit backwards. Um, so I came to camp here actually two years in a row and did extremely well, but my junior year camp, um, I won the camp on a field goal competition, and at the end of camp I was told uh, that they already had uh, some existing guys and that they didn't feel they had a scholarship available, so that kind of left a little bit of an interesting taste in my mouth, but I was very persistent and kept emailing Coach Tressel and, uh, you know, is there any opportunity, is it going to open up, and uh, it actually took until um, like early November, I think, of my senior year, Coach Tressel gave me a call and said he was coming out to a game. And I was just ecstatic because I hadn't even heard from him in like three weeks or four weeks. And all of a sudden he was going to come to a game and I ended up having two field goals in the game and just felt really good about it. Well, what we loved about Michael was he was an athlete, he was a competitor, um, he was all-state soccer player, uh, all-state tennis player. So we knew he'd been in critical situations more than just the few opportunities you have to kick a field goal in, in crunch time. And he also demonstrated that when he came to our kicking camp in the summer, we tried to put him in as tough a situation as possible and you could tell he was a competitor. You know, he put me in touch with Coach D and he talked about he wanted to get me here for some visits and that he was thinking about offering me. Uh, and when he did, it was just, you know, one of the best moments of my life. As his dream of playing college football came true, Michael was on cloud nine as he prepared to make the move to MSU in the following fall. But in the final months of high school, he found himself in the face of adversity. Second half of my senior year, I lost uh, my best friend to a single car accident. You can't really put it in words. Um, throughout the whole time, uh, you know, dealing with his family, people would say, you know, it'll get better or, or you know, things will change and you know, you'll, you'll be able to move on. And for me, I like to take the approach that, you know, you're never really going to be able to move on in the same way you were going. And I just think, uh, like, when you go through something like that, you have to take a positive approach to it. And, you know, now that the emotional aspect has subsided, I see that I grew a lot during that time. You know, if you take a positive aspect and you try to live, you know, for someone or for a purpose, I think uh, it helps you cope with it better and, you know, it's definitely helped me grow. As soon as he set foot in East Lansing, Michael's expectations were high and he fully expected to prove himself as an elite kicker and earn a starting role. I had very high expectations for myself coming in here, but I also understood that there was other eager guys who wanted to kick and it was a very intense competition during camp, uh, primarily between Kevin Muma and I. 
and he kicked really well and he was a fifth year senior and so Coach D gave him the nod um, you know to start the season but I kind of knew in the back of my head that if I you know stuck to my plan and worked as hard as I could and proved in practice that I was you know a viable option uh, that I would be ready when my opportunity came. And now young Michael Geiger will try his first career field goal Mike Sadler will hold it. It's down. It's up. It's good. He split the upright. And I was just so grateful that Coach D had faith in me on the road uh, at Notre Dame to put me in in that uh, you know raucous environment. And I just think that you know from that point forward, I was just ecstatic because I knew that every opportunity I had was one to be grateful for and one to go out and seize. Over his time in the green and white, Michael has seized those opportunities. Whether he was nailing point after tries or knocking down field goals, the Spartans continuously relied on him in big moments. And on November 21st, 2015, in his home state of Ohio, he was called upon for his biggest opportunity yet. For me, obviously, if the, if the environment is bigger or whatever, it's rewarding to make a kick. For that Ohio State game, uh, I think I've said it before, but uh, I just, I envisioned that kick probably thousands of times in my childhood because I used to practice, even when I was a kid, kicking over my swing set uh, just for fun or, you know, and it was always to beat Ohio State. And to have that happen, uh, to have that come full circle, and it, it was really a dream to come true. Geiger from 41 for the win. After it left my foot, I pretty much, uh, just based on how I hit the ball, I knew uh, I hit it well. And as I saw it, you know, kind of played a little draw there. I saw it, you know, going right into the uprights. Uh, and I just took off running because, you know, I barely even had to watch it go in uh, because I knew that, you know, it was, it was right in the middle of the uprights and it was going in. Just, just pure joy, pure raw emotion, uh, seeing it uh, go through. And, you know, everything that happened after that, I don't <laughs> really know where it came from, from deep inside of me other than I was just ecstatic. Michigan State, as gutsy as it gets. After a junior year full of major moments, Michael came into his senior season with his spirits high. But once again, he found himself facing major adversity as he lost another close friend. It's definitely a difficult loss uh, to lose Mike, and I just was so thankful to have such an experienced you know, veteran and such a good guy to learn from. Uh, I've definitely learned how to deal with adversity. Um, there's so many ups and downs. What I've learned is to you know, walk with a level head and never to take anything for granted, any opportunity or any relationship, um, because unfortunately I've had a couple that you know, were ended too soon. And uh, obviously uh, I wish I could have you know, one last word with both my friend and with Mike and also with the passing of Mylon Hicks, I'm a good friend. But ultimately, um, you know, you can just do your best to move on and support the families and try to, you know, obviously live positively and have an influence, you know, that they would have had on the world and bring, you know, something a little extra every day to honor them. Michael has already secured his spot as one of the best special teamers in Spartan history, but he's still got time left to leave his legacy as he closes out his final season in the green and white. I think people are going to look at him as a very, very big part of the team. When they look at the, at the, at the run we made last year and they see, you know, the, the kicks that he made, you know, people forget he kicked field goal in the Rose Bowl. You know, how many people would like to be on that stage and say, wow, you know, he, that kid kicked a field goal in the Rose Bowl. He kicked a field goal to Ohio State to win the game. He kicked a field goal in the Cotton Bowl. I think people will look back on him very fondly and with a smile on their face because he's really gotten the job done over his career. You know, looking back, I'll definitely you know cherish some of the statistics and some of the times I've had here. Uh, but for the most part, I just hope with my fellow players and I'm remembered as someone who was consistent and a hard worker, and you know, just someone who was reliable and who epitomized being a Spartan dog. The Spartans' matchup with Northwestern marks 101 years since MSU's first homecoming game. That game, played in 1915, featured Michigan Agricultural College versus Oregon State at Old College Field in a contest that sparked a tradition that has lived on for over a century as an integral part of Michigan State's DNA. Well, I think it's a chance really to, for people to come home 
and see the campus is still as spectacular as when they were here. To interact with students to understand that what we're doing today is just an extension of what we've done for many, many years, which is educate global citizen scholars to make a difference in the world and be able also to connect with their own friends and relive some of their memories. Well, as an alum myself, this is a, a great weekend. It's a weekend where friends come back, uh, some who don't come to every football game, but it's an opportunity to be part of their college, part of the homecoming parade, really a celebration of campus. Uh, it's a time when campus is transitioning from summer into fall. The leaves uh, are, are very colorful, but really a chance for people to be with people. And uh, that's what Michigan State's all about. That's what homecoming delivers. It's a reason for each college to invite back alumni advisory committees or advisory boards and treat them to an extraordinary afternoon in Spartan Stadium. And we can all talk about football and a football game, no matter what college we come from, no matter our life experiences. It sort of is our common experience tomorrow uh, for the football game. And it really is important that we all have that common experience. So athletics becomes the front porch, the common element that can tie Spartans together no matter whether they studied philosophy or zoology or anatomy. Over 101 years, numerous homecoming traditions have come and gone in East Lansing, but there is one that has stood the test of time, the homecoming parade. Homecoming presents the perfect backdrop for Spartan Nation of past, present, and future to reunite and reminisce together. That passion is not lost on the Spartans, who no matter what, seem to put an outstanding show in front of their home crowd at Spartan Stadium. He starts his tight end in motion right to left. Hands to Green. Got him. He's hitting the backfield. He's hitting the backfield. Adam Decker with the play of the game. Adam Decker sticks Sean Green. Spartans on the attack to begin this OT. And it's Urban. Cedric Urban spinning. Still going. Touchdown. Badgers have three defenders back inside the five yard line. Kirk rolls to his right. Finally sends a long spiral to the end zone. Tap he got run. it! And caught at the goal line. Spartans win! Unbelievable! Touchdown! Touchdown! MSU! <laughs> the feel inside Spartan Stadium on homecoming weekend is a little bit different than most other games. It's, uh, it's a chance where uh, friends are with friends. It, it always takes me back to the movie The Big Chill, um, which is kind of that, you know, feel good, throw the ball around before you go into Spartan Stadium and hopefully enjoy a great Spartan victory. Well, you know, football is a way for us to gather. And football is a way for us to celebrate what's right about the education of young people, young men in this case, and the fact that it's not about a game, it's about life and life lessons. And we have a coaching staff and athletic department that very much understands that the difference between being here on a Saturday afternoon and being someplace else in a stadium on Sunday is about those life lessons and our responsibility that everyone leaves here as an educated person who can make a difference in the world, even if they might play football on Sunday. Good afternoon, everybody, and happy homecoming to Michigan State Spartans everywhere. This is the 101st homecoming weekend 
Tom and Lupe Izzo, Grand Marshals for last evening's parade. And now it's up to the Spartans of Mark D'Antonio as they take on the Northwestern Wildcats. The Spartans are going to get the ball first. Jack Mitchell will kick off for Northwestern. They won the toss and deferred. The Spartans will receive Northwestern to defend the south goal to our right. Lewerke on the first play, flushed out of the pocket, runs to his right. He's out of bounds all the way down at the 15-yard line. Second down, 10. Lewerke has Gerald Holmes to his left. In motion, Josiah Price left to right. Play fake to Holmes. Lewerke lofts it. End zone. Josiah Price over the shoulder grab. Touchdown, MSU! 15-yarder. Surprise starter, Brian Lewerke. The Josiah Price. He beat Trey Williams of the Wildcats. Long count for Thorson. Throws it oh, right there it is, Picked off on the run down the sidelines. Goes Justin Lane into the end zone. The converted wide receiver just a couple of weeks ago with a pick six. Touchdown, MSU. And the Spartans lead Northwestern early 14 to nothing. What a start, Jason Strayhorn. Yeah, it's an incredible start here for this homecoming weekend. L.J. Scott stays on at running back. Spartans at their 25. Brian Lewerke started the game. Hands to L.J. He's got running room off left guard. Bangs a Wildcat out of the way and gets all the way out to the 48-yard line. Straight eye behind him. Lewerke throws it left side. Nice grab at the knees by Prescott Line. Bowls over a Wildcat. All right, Geiger with the win. A 41-yard try from the right hash mark. It's on the way. And it is good. Michael Geiger from 41 yards away. And that will bring us to the halftime break. Our halftime score at Spartan Stadium. The Northwestern Wildcats 19. The Michigan State Spartans 17. Northwestern gets the football to start the second half. Kevin Cronin's kickoff, touchback, and the ball comes out to the 25-yard line. Clayton Thorson at the controls. Jackson to his right. Play fake. Thorson steps back in the pocket. Got a man wide open down the left sideline. The catch is going to be made by Flynn Nagel, and Nagel's going to go all the way to the house. And they now lead 25-17. Snap back to Tyler O'Connor and a play fake. Go deep. Unloads the deep ball for R.J. Shelton. Tipped. It is. Caught. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. And we got a ball game. 5 and 54 to play third quarter. Northwestern 33, Michigan State 24. Clayton Thorson. Pulls down a high snap. Hands it to Jackson. And he is belted down. Malik McDowell in his face. Spartans at the 14, straight eye behind Tyler O'Connor. Play big. Back at the five. Unloads it deep. He's got RJ. RJ's behind the Wildcat. He's at the 20, the 15, the 10. Angles to his left. Into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. Going in to kick off. One hop at the five. Solomon Vault on the return. Look out, he's out at the 30 and the 40. Solomon Vault at midfield. Solomon Vault angling to his left. Solomon Vault at the 10. He's at the five. He's into the end zone. Northwestern with an answer. Ouch. With a minute and 53 to play in the third. They go up 39 to 31. Cody Keeler for David Beadle at left tackle. Tyler O'Connor winds up and throws left sideline. Over the shoulder, grabbed Donnie Corley. Tyler under center. Play fake. End zone throw. Donnie Corley over the shoulder, grab. Touchdown, MSU. Nine yards for the score. A lot of excitement from the green and white on the offensive end here. 
in the second half. The Northwestern has done enough for sure, and then some. Our final score, Northwestern 54, Michigan State 40. Uh, you know, disappointing loss. Um, I thought our play players played extremely hard, jumped out fast. Uh, had a couple turnovers overturned on replay. Probably affected us a little bit, but uh, second quarter went to them. Third quarter went back and forth, cut it to two a couple times, I think. But, um, you know, the bottom line is it didn't stop the run. And uh, we didn't stop the pass much either. Too many points. I thought offensively we had some big plays. Inconsistency see to run the football, though. We've got to be able to run the ball. And uh, took some sacks. But uh, the big kickoff return, obviously, for a touchdown was huge. Uh, you know, we've got to make the play on that. Uh, so can't go out the gate for not 100 yards. So um, got to get better. Got Maryland next week. Yeah. Sure, our guys are very disappointed, very, but uh, the challenge remains. Nobody lets you out of a corner. Nobody gives you a hall pass. You got to fight your way out of that corner, and that's what we'll do. So, with that being said, we'll go back to work tomorrow.